I like to picture Jesus as a ninja fighting off evil samurai. How much you want to make a bet I can throw a football over the mountains? What? English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Yeah, fuck it, dude. Let's go bold. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody! 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 Well, at least no. that wasn't weird. No, it's gotta be as long as yeah. it is. Welcome to the Minkblot Filmcast episode... Is this 10? I think this is episode 10. I think we made it to double digits. We may have. Let me double check. Hey, Richie. This is Richie. This is a, my main man, Richard Johnson, from uh, Buffalo, New York, as well as I. He is... Who are you? What are you? I'm a filmmaker. Yeah, I, I shoot things like commercials, movies... All of his stuff. Oh, you know? I don't even... What, yeah. yeah, pretty much all my stuff. We just did the 48-hour film festival. You should check it out. It's yeah. Sunday. You should go. You should if you wanted yeah. to. It is episode 10. We, we're taking Welcome. donations. Welcome we're to episode 10. we're doing short films. Donation. Yeah, we're taking... I have scripts if you want to read them. And if you have money, even better. But, hey, that's not what this is about. This is about good boys. We just went to see good boys. How was it? Low key, I thought it was gonna suck. Yeah. But it was actually really funny. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of jokes that I would make. Yeah, a hundred percent. And That's, the whole theater. I'm was really glad up. that I took you to this because yeah. this is like your humor, a hundred percent. And it's like, this is honestly one of those movies that I felt like driving home, like we could make that, and we would totally make that. And it, like without the twelve year old aspect of it, but if like. If I wrote a script like that, and then we just went and made it, yeah, we could totally do every, like, the way, okay, so I want to go through, let's go through the different elements of this movie. What do you think of the overall story and writing elements? How, how did they build the world? What did you think about that? It was pretty good. All very cohesive, and they brought things together, and it was mm-hmm. stuff that you didn't really think of, and like, oh, wait, that's from earlier on. Right. Like. Yeah, a lot of callbacks. Yeah. Wait, like that's that's how you write sex good doll, material. For example, through oh, yeah. the windshield. There's a CPR doll. That's a <laughs> CP- CPR. CPR with huge tits in it, and uh, she's a main character of sorts. She's <laughs> Stephen Merchant. I know the actor because he's funny and he's the dude. Do you ever play Portal? Do you ever play the game Portal? No. Do you know? Well, there's a there's a robot in it, and his name's Wheatley, and he has his voice. The dude that's like not a pedophile. And he totally looks like a pedophile. <laughs> and it's it's pretty much, they're trying to sell one of their most valuable trading cards of whatever game that they have. Um, I don't know, it's like Dungeons and Dragons, Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like Something. a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Yeah. It's a $600 Yu-Gi-Oh card, let's just say that. Pokemon, for you laymans. Do you know what Yu-Gi-Oh is? Yeah. Do you play Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, that's because you weren't cool. But it's <laughs> basically... He comes over, and they have basically a, a existential crisis on whether or not they will relinquish this card because it has so many memories attached to it because it was in their first pack the whatever things that they got, and they got it together. They, they started a dog-washing company. Was that what they said, or car washing? I think it was dog walking. Dog Something walking? Like dogs. Dog know. washing. They howl, too. Fun yeah, fact. that's... <laughs> The, the beanbag boys. Yeah. That's the fucking best. But let me finish. The CPR doll came up earlier in the movie when they were trying to learn how to kiss. And then it came up when Stephen Merson came over and it was posing as their parent. They they placed the, her behind, sitting sitting towards the door. And then he like tries to approach her. And then she just falls to the floor like a dead body. And then he pick, everyone picks her up. He's still sitting there and he's like, that's how much you want for it. <laughs> and then it's... it's so they don't sell the card, and then they sell the CPR doll, sex doll. And it's like, it's such a good reversal because it's like something you used previously in the script. Like writing-wise, that's how you fucking write yeah. movies. Like you and introduce then, things in the beginning. And then it flies through the windshield on the highway. Yeah, spoilers. This is going to be a spoiler podcast because, oh yeah, this, this eye line's definitely off. Well, whatever. We'll fix it afterwards. It's not going to be off for you guys because I'm really good at my job. 
But it's, <laughs> this movie has a lot of good callbacks because that also comes up again in another scene where they're trying to cross the highway and then one of them causes a collision and that collision turns into the doll flying through the windshield of the car and it, it seems like a dead body for a moment and you're like, did these kids just murder someone? I might have just seen these kids commit manslaughter, but no. Child it's, slaughter. It's a, it was a sex doll that flew through the windshield and, and you noticed a particular something that was a feature of the sex doll. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but when you watch the movie, check out the eyes. Yeah, I guess I guess that's an interesting point. I didn't fully notice. I thought they were just white all over, and then yeah, it can give you all you really just, need just, to know. Just watch it. Yeah, you got to go see this right, movie. But to I might be, honest, be right, so check it out. Lots of laughs. How many laughs? A lot. Can you count no. how many times you laughed? The whole movie theater pretty much was the dying. Whole time. Yeah, it, it was, was a pretty great, funny. Like over, like with the audience too. That was great. Yeah. Because like the everyone was kind of just paying attention to the movie. It was a good old fashioned, fucking good ass original idea. I mean, original enough. I thought it was gonna be so much more like Superbad, and it was. But dude, these performances. These are twelve year olds. Yeah. Like thirteen year olds. That's yeah. crazy. Like these guys are. Like obviously, there's some lines where you're like, okay, yeah, and that is, that wasn't the, the greatest delivery. But like overall, with the jokes and everything, it keeps your, it keeps your suspension of disbelief, you know. Yeah, I mean for sure. And overall, it was a really good movie. How do, how is it shot? Do, do you notice anything? Do you know? Do you look at that stuff or with this sort of thing with like? Yeah, the but I mean, kinda... like it was it was shot okay, not great. The slow mo like parts normally. were kind of. Eh. Yeah. They were a little too rampy. Yeah, yeah. They could have. They could have ramped slower. It was just like, boom. yeah. This <laughs> like movie was definitely more. It wasn't the three hundred levels. Yeah, slow-mo. yeah. It was like more story. Yeah, for sure. Um, Some you and your it's buddies. It's so funny. You don't even care what it looks like. It's just funny. For sure. That's the whole point of it. The kids were really funny. What was the Max? Was the main kid? I think so. He's horny as shit the whole time. Yeah. That's basically his basically role. Basically, imagine Connor. No. A little. No, nah, don't imagine Connor, but a little. I mean, maybe, but not. Probably not, but maybe not. But uh, there is another. <laughs> there is another kid that is a really good singer. He was yeah. like the the bad boy of the group. He had spiky hair and a jean jacket <laughs> and a tank top towards the end. And he had an earring. He acts out because of that's of his character. Like there's a lot of. You can tell there were like the. I was I was gonna go into something else. Very clearly defined characters in this movie. Like, I love the main character is basically Max, who's like a fucking super horny 12-year-old. And then you have his best friend or whatever. Their best, His best friends is Beanbag Boys group mm-hmm. that uh, he grew up with and everything. And then they both have like... Like, the sign of a good writer is if each character, you don't have to know who's saying it. If you read the line, you know basically who it came from. And that was very well done in this movie. Yeah. Very well written. Yeah. I'm, Say stuff while I look up the IMDb. Like, IMDb. pretty much, if you're teenage and up, it's funny. Yeah. So even adults, it was funny. It's not very, like, oriented. Yeah, there's, like, a 50-year-old Just... dude next to me laughing. Yeah, It'll it was be funny. Because there's stuff in there for parents, for kids, for everybody. I definitely want to take little kids because they wouldn't 13 year understand olds. it. Take 13-year-olds. Yeah. Honestly, I think this should have been PG-13 because swearing is so defunct in our society now. Yeah. Like, did you swear when you were 13? Probably. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Most likely. Because you would listen to music and almost all music. Because it's basically like, the reason I don't really give a shit about swearing, it's just, you're expressing, uh, expressing, you're expressing passion in a certain way that causes a reaction, which is the fucking point you get it because i swore haha i could really tell the passion on that sentence let me get, tell you right do you see what i'm saying and that's the whole that's the whole idea of it, is you're supposed to use it as a tool rather than i mean it's a comedic tool it's a scary tool like you can it's very whatever, whatever very you versatile this is why i brought him yes only reason he knows words and i'm the writer <laughs> but yeah I don't read. I should read more, 100%. But we have Jacob Tremblay as Max. He's the main main character. 
You have Keith L. Williams as Lucas. He was the, the taller black friend that they had, who was hilarious. He follows all the rules. His parents are going through a divorce. He dislocates his arm. He dislocates his arm and it's fucking gross. <laughs> and then they fucking slam him into a dumpster. <laughs> yeah. And it's the wrong arm. <laughs> you get it? Because it's like funny. Uh, what do you think about the whole drugs thing? I like the Rock of Ages part. He's in a musical. He joins the musical at the end. Spoiler alert. This whole thing's going to be full of spoilers. So I'm going to release it on Monday. So that if you haven't watched it by now, we'll put spoilers. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I mean. What do you think of the, the all the like, the, the, the fucking mission when he was trying to. The, so basically the whole plot of this is they're trying to go to this kissing party so that the main character Max could kiss his crush. And then that would be the resolution of the whole movie, more or less. And to do this, they accidentally break their his father's drone. And then that turns into the people that found the drone bartering for it. And then it turns into Max and the boys going to a uh, fucking frat house. And then at this frat house, they have to go purchase drugs for the girls that have their drone. And this is like a very complicated thing I'm saying right now, but they explain it to you explicitly a lot through the movie. That's another weird writing thing that I found with it. It's like, they just kind of told you what was going on a lot. And I'm like, okay, I mean, there's that for the people that need it. But yeah, but it's funny. So yeah. you kind of don't care. I'm and rambling. that's why it, it's a good movie just to watch, to laugh. It's good. It's I'd, good. I'd watch it again. How but good is it? I probably only watch it three times max. If that Total. Happens. Yeah. Would you Would you watch it if you were at a buddy's house and they wanted to throw it on? If they haven't seen it before, definitely. If they have, yeah. probably not. No. Yeah. But well, you would probably. Well, we're we are men of cinema. We watch. We watch we this. Watch this was a movie. This was a movie. Yes. This isn't cinema. Yeah. This was good though. Favorite movie? Aware. That's great. your favorite movie. Yeah, it's great. I've never seen it. You guys show me. Wait, what? Aware. Aware? Yeah. Oh, my my movie. That's your favorite movie? That's not true. It's good. That's not a... You should check it out. <laughs> YouTube.com slash C slash Minkflop. The thing you're on. Yeah, just currently. giant <laughs> URL at the bottom. Jesus. We are super off center. This is going to be punched in as frame. Whatever. But the... Uh, uh, punch in the frame. What else? What else did you like? Name name some of your favorite parts of this movie. Ah, uh, okay. Give me four. Four? Yeah. Wow, he really put me on the spot. Give here. me okay. Give me three. And then I'll give you. Doesn't I'll, make I'll it give any you three. better. You, I'll give you three. You give that, me. Three. How about you give me the three first? That no, 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 no. That's not how this works. I asked you a question. You don't ask me a question after you ask. I ask you a question. <laughs> All right. So the whole thing. <laughs> The whole thing. That's how you get people to do what you want. It was, it was pretty funny. But one of the really funny parts is he flew off his bike and hit the van. <laughs> yeah. He's being chased by the one girl that they stole the drugs from. Right. Um, this is going to be all the funny parts, so if you don't want to yeah. spoil that either. So basically what they did to get her to go away is they yelled really loud that, that she was trying to touch their penises. <laughs> and yeah, it was funny. I'm, she's um, our babysitter. She's trying to touch her penises. <laughs> what? I mean... Just jolts. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Two more. And then uh, the little kids, like the little Asian kid. Yeah. They try to make Dude, he's them, a like, boss. Yeah, exactly. Dude, he's a fucking man. Yeah. Continue. And then last thing that I found really cool about the movie. Awkward silence. Let's just say that the You're parents really to, what's his name? Thor. His parents are funny. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to say why, just they're funny. Sex toys. A lot of them. There's a lot of sex toys throughout this movie. They got and you swings. Can, you, can piece, you can piece this together. <laughs> well, they got the swings in the trailer, so that's fine. I'm just swaying right now. Swaying back and forth. I'm going to look off camera sometimes yeah. because there's you a You know TV. what they did in that chair? He got it from a thrift store. Yeah. This motherfucker. I mean, I'd give you chicken fingers. 
I invite you they to my good. house. They were very good. I I'm may, not hating on the chair. I think I make the chair's you, cool. I make you set up a camera for me yeah. and record a podcast. Uh-huh. Loki, it's probably going to die in a second. What are you talking about? Nah, it we, doesn't tell you on Let's the give it... Okay, I don't know how long we've been talking. It's been more than 10 minutes, so let's give it our closing closing thoughts. Okay. Uh, or no, I got to do my three because you gave your three. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> nice. So real quick, um, I thought the... Um, the... the Steven Merchant's character was probably one of my favorite characters. I love the background characters, that there's the, just this random old guy in the park that was laughing at them becoming separated as friends. And he's like, shut the fuck up, old man! You said Gandalf. <laughs> or Gandalf. Gandalf. Yeah. I'm not smart. Old man would have also been funny. But if you get the point. It was a reference. But other than that, the... Um, I'm trying to think of something different. No, I think one of my favorite scenes, though, was when they weren't about to get the drugs and they were about to walk away. And then Max just, like, fucking pulls out a fucking... <laughs> the biggest paintball gun I've ever seen, probably just because he's a 12-year-old. And then he just, like, fucking holds everyone up. And then... Oh, he fucking, does more than holds them well, up. Well, he holds them up for a second. And then at a certain point, someone comes in and then... Brrr, dude, it was, like... And then he does some sort of, I think, Robert De Niro from Heat or something line. I didn't, I don't know exactly what the line was, but, or no, he he walks out and he's like, we were never here. And then he closes the door and I don't remember what that's from, but it's definitely from something and it's good. But closing argument, give me a rating or a thought. Well, give me a star rating. 6.5 out of, no, 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Overall. That's pretty well, In terms filmmaking. of funniness, 8 out of 10. Shot wise, it is what it is. Yes, but it's a I comedy. S- it's not the point. Seven. It's supposed to be funny. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I would say probably just 7.5. That'd be around there. 7, 7.5. Seven just because, I mean, it's good. Yeah, like, but like you said, I mean, it's not. I was laughing the whole time. It wasn't a life changing experience. But. Like once upon a time in Hollywood, I think I gave that a eight or a nine or something. I don't even remember. But if it has Quentin Tarantino in it, I got this. That means it's gonna be at least an eight in Connor's book. Well, not necessarily if it's bad. It's not gonna be bad though. It's Quentin Tarantino. I mean, that's a good point and that's true. But you were trying to make a point that I'm like sucking the dick or something, and that's not what's happening. I I hold him to a standard, and if he meets or exceeds that standard, yeah, I'm happy. He's an interesting character for sure. And I'm really glad none of this Harvey Weinstein at things affected him because I would have been real sad. Yeah, very very sad. But well, yeah, well, this is uh movie. this has been the Mink Flat Filmcast. This is uh Richard Johnson. He has things that he may want to plug. What do you what? Where can people find you? Who are Instagram, you? Instagram. My name. Richard Johnson. Yep. What else? Do you, have a, do you have a website? Um, do you have a Twitter? Do you have a Facebook? No, I'm, I'm basic. I'm you a just basic have an Instagram? Pretty you 100% much. have a website that you're not saying. But it's not done yet. Just right. look me up on Instagram, man. Just And watch our movies. This movie, because we spend this lots of is, money and time on this them. This podcast is eternal. This, you're, I'm going to post your... Eternal. Well, I'm posting I, his website in the description. Yeah, you can do that. Because I know what it's it is. It's in the link in my Instagram. But yeah, check it out. <laughs> We want to make people go through hoops? What if they're like, fuck Instagram, and I just want to go to websites? What if he's a website man? What if, Richie? You don't even know. Yeah. What if? I'm Connor Mink Powitz. Connor Mink. Fucking Mink Blot. Fucking Ultra Mink on SoundCloud, I guess. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, which you're most likely watching this on. And it's youtube.com slash C slash Mink I have a website, minkblatt.com. Find all your minkblatt needs. I want to get merch, but I am broke, so we'll see what happens. But, yeah. <laughs> That's about it. I got Twitter, minkblatt's Instagram, same thing. Facebook. I also have a, uh, wait, what I have a LinkedIn. I have a MySpace. I have a, no, I don't have a MySpace. I have a wegmans.com account. I have a... Old Navy Shoppers Club card. That's tops. Never mind. Uh, no, this is that's not funny anymore. You're not laughing, so I'm gonna bail. All right.
that's about it. So tune in next week when I talk about another movie that just came out. So see ya. I like to picture Jesus as a ninja fighting off evil samurai. How much you want to make a bet I can throw a football over the mountains? What? English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Yeah, fuck it, dude. Let's go bold. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody! 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 Or at least that wasn't weird. <laughs>